Part of the bigger question here for Ireland to get back on its feet, our next guest says it has to invest more in startups. Intel's former CEO and chairman is in Ireland this week trying to connect Irish startups with American venture capitalists, bringing Silicon Valley to the Emerald Isle. Craig Barry is currently chair of the Irish Technology Leadership Group. He's live this morning from Limerick, Ireland. Craig, uh, good afternoon to you there. All the talk is about austerity and, and cutbacks. You're advocating long-term investment. How receptive are people to this message? Well, we'll see when the government comes out with its budget, but I think uh, most uh, people I've talked to in Ireland recognize the future is going to be related to innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, more research in the universities, more spin out of startup companies, and that takes continued investment in the educational institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, well, when you were running Intel, I mean, you brought business there to Ireland. Google has operations. There are a number of technology firms. A big part of that's the tax rate, 12.5%. I mean, it's a fraction of what it is elsewhere in Europe. Are you concerned that that's in jeopardy now if Ireland has to get external help? Well, I haven't seen any evidence around the world that raising the tax rate provides any incentive to increase investment or create new jobs. So I think it's pretty obvious that people would be concerned about an increasing tax rate, what that might do to job creation or the economy as a whole. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, double Irish, the Dutch sandwich, I mean, there are ways to legally keep your tax rate quite low as a, as a corporation there. If you were still running Intel and the Irish government had to hike the tax rate, would you keep business there? Well, you're not going to do anything instantaneously. You have a, a, uh, billions of dollars of uh, manufacturing capability in the ground and thousands of well-trained workers doing a great job. So uh, there's not going to be an instantaneous response but I think Ireland is looking at the long-term future of Ireland. A big part of that in the past has been foreign direct investment, companies like Intel that you mentioned. I don't think any country or any economy would want to jeopardize uh, those positions going forward. Is there a danger in uh, attracting too much multinational investment versus uh, growing businesses domestically? Well, I think that that's the issue that Ireland faces. Uh, Ireland grew dramatically during the 1990s, early part of this century, on the basis of foreign direct investment. I think that's probably played out to a large degree now because there are, uh, Asia has opened up China and India and other areas, which are probably uh, better venues for new manufacturing facilities. So I think Ireland is faced with the prospect of having to grow in the future by indigenous growth, uh, using the brain power of its uh, workforce to grow. And that's why research and development, new startups, entrepreneurship is so important to the country. Mm -hmm. Have you been impressed with what you found in terms of some of those startups? Oh, absolutely. Uh, actually, a week ago at uh, Stanford University, we had uh, Science Foundation Ireland and Enterprise Ireland come over and Many of the universities came over and gave a, uh, a thumbnail sketch of their research activities. We had mm -hmm. corporations and VCs there, very impressed with what they've had. And I've had the opportunity to talk to some of the individual researchers in the last couple of days. We're back now with Intel's former CEO and chairman, Craig Barrett, who is in Limerick, Ireland this week for a Silicon Valley Comes to Ireland conference. Craig, uh, thanks for staying with us through the break. I, I want to pick it up here and sort of uh, broaden out the topic, because what we're talking about with Ireland is really a story similar to, to one that's being had here at home, which is if you've got to cut debt deficits, have some austerity, what is the thing you shouldn't touch? What actually endangers the long-term growth prospects? Is there a country that you would point to or a model of, of a country that really is able to foster innovation, particularly in technology? Well, I think you're absolutely right, Margaret. The, the issue here in Ireland is identical to the U.S. and how do you grow your economy going forward and is it going to grow by innovation and entrepreneurship? You have to keep the investment in R&D, research and development at a high level, probably increase it going forward. Uh, there are a few countries around the world that have a higher uh, investment in R&D as a percentage of their gross national product, Finland, Israel, uh, who have seen great strides in, in entrepreneurial activity and done a good job in that space, Singapore as well, Korea increasingly. So there are good examples around the world. I think the real challenge, though, for every established economy is this is 
the technique in the future you're going to use to grow your economy and you're going to have to invest in education, mm-hmm. your universities, basic research and development. Uh, if you cut back on those, you're basically cutting off your future. Uh, we had Nobel laureate Edmund Phelps on this show uh, earlier this week. His specialty is uh, employment and wages. He's advocating the creation, uh, really, not only in this country, but in particular in the United States, a first national bank of, in, of innovation, a network of banks to finance innovative products, like a farm credit system. Is that something that you would be supportive of? Well, you, you need the vehicle to foster new ideas, bring them to commercialization, and whether that's through uh, seed capital, angel capital, venture capital, or through some form of uh, innovation banking system, uh, any of those I think could work. In the United States, you have a great venture capital system. Uh, it's it's pulled back a little bit with this recession, but hopefully it'll grow in the future. Places like Ireland, uh, the venture capital system is just getting going. Uh, but you do need that financing mechanism to get these entrepreneurial ideas off the ground. Uh, does it bother you, though, if that financing mechanism has government support? Is there something that uh, can actually hurt innovation, or, or is that necessary? Well, if, if the government support means the government is going to pick and choose winning categories, uh, then I would opt out of that system. I'd go with the private venture capital system. Uh, I think you want a system which is really policy neutral Mm -hmm. and is going to just fund the best ideas, the most opportunistic ideas that are presented to it, not by some pre-described or predisposed industrial policy model. Um, so you've been in Ireland, uh, switching gears back to there for the, for three days for this summit. Um, you've brought along executives from Palm, from Nokia, from a number of different companies. Have you seen any real uh, pledges or promises of support? Well, the the Irish Technology Leadership Group is over here uh, with 25 uh, representatives of venture capital firms and businesses. They're examining a number of Irish startup companies. Uh, Tonight they'll announce one of their top picks or winners for a prize. They're going to bring another seven of those back to Silicon Valley uh, for detailed discussions with venture capitalists there. So I think there's a lot of progress being made. There's a a lot of good work going on in the universities here. They're they're all creating innovation centers. They're trying to teach entrepreneurship and innovation to their graduate students. So Ireland's moving really moving ahead on this topic. All right. Well, uh, good luck in that role. Thank you, Craig, for making time. Uh, Craig Barrett there joining us from Limerick, Ireland.